Hello everyone, my name is Chloe and this is my getting started with Docker video. When I first started learning Docker on my own, I noticed that there were a lot of really great resources out there, but not a whole lot for people who are starting from basic square one. So if you have not touched Docker before, this video is definitely for you. If you are very experienced in Docker, I'm not really sure why you're here, but welcome to the party. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, we'll start learning all the Docker things. So a quick note, if you are more of a reader and less of a watcher, you can click the links that I've put below this video. Um, they're going to include very specific articles about everything from tags to layers to basically everything that you need, um, the difference between a VM versus Docker. All of that information will be um, linked to the bottom and they are medium blogs. So feel free to check those out if that's more your speed. Okay, so what is a container? You can literally think of a container as a container on a shipping vessel. Um, it's gonna have everything that you need inside of it. So you've probably worked with the VM before. Um, you usually have to pip install your different dependencies. This is where a lot of issues come into play with works on my machine. Maybe you have a different version of something than your coworker does. So containers literally containerize everything. So the application itself, plus its dependencies. It's really awesome and totally blew my mind coming from a boot camp where I was using the VM all the time, being able to have something up and running almost immediately. So you can think of containers as a pod of everything that you need for your application. So this is done a lot in the development community. Um, it makes continuous integration a lot easier. It makes development process a lot easier and faster. So uh, I think it's wonderful to learn about containers personally because I am totally on the container train. I think that it makes my life a lot easier as a developer. And I think you are really gonna have your mind blown if you haven't played with them yet. So let's get started. All right, so obviously the most important step is that we need to download Docker. So I'll let you pause this video Go to docker.com, download Docker. If that's too much of a commitment for you if you just aren't ready to commit, I understand. Um, I've linked a very handy uh, web hosted demo that you can use. It is important to note though that after four hours, it'll clear everything that you've done. So I would recommend downloading Docker. You're gonna end up using it anyway. Uh, very easy to do. So take a little pause and download it real quick. I'll wait. Okay, I'm gonna assume you've downloaded it. Drinking Hello Kitty iced tea, just so I can get my caffeine up. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna be typing along, so excuse the typing sounds as I do this. So now that we have Docker installed um, and you're in your terminal or you're using playing with Docker, let's run the following command. It would help if I clicked in the right area. So docker run dash it Ubuntu, and then click enter. And you're going to see something similar to root at a bunch of letters, numbers. Great. So we just use the Docker client to interact with the Docker daemon. What does that mean? So you're running an image of Ubuntu. What is an image, you might ask? So an image is an application you would like to run. And when you run your image, you get a container. But what is a container? A container is a running instance of an image. If you want to learn more about this, I wrote a very handy article about it that you can read below that makes some comparisons between, um, you know, classes and subclasses, as well as a really fun VCR cassette kind of comparison. So check that out if you want more info on that. Um, great. So what's going on when we run dash IT? We're not telling it to run it. Although that is a really great way to uh, remember that command. So dash i informs Docker that we would like to connect to, this, uh, to the container's standard output. And dash t lets Docker know that we want a pseudo terminal. So if you try to do the following, uh, let's type in figlet hey. We get a command not found. All right, no reason to panic. Um, we just need to install it. So let's run apt slash git update. So that's going to update our packages. And that'll just take a second to load here. Take another sip from my Hello Kitty iced tea in the meantime. How's everybody doing? Great? 
awesome. Okay, so it finished very quick. So now let's run apt get install figlet. Cool, so you'll see that it's loading figlet for us. Okay, so here's the really, really fun part. And I would like to thank French Ben at Docker for teaching this to me because it's a really fun trick. So let's write figlet, and this is the really important part. You have to put your name, Chloe in this case, and then comma, you da bomb. What? It's pretty cool, huh? So, look at that. In a minute, we just installed Figlet, we ran our container, very cool. So let's exit our container. Also, if you wanna play around here, press pause. I totally understand, you can write a bunch of words. Um, so let's type exit. So right now, it still exists, but its resources are now freed up. So if we run this again, docker run dash it Ubuntu, and we try to run figlet again, so I do figlet yo, command not found. Where is figlet? So that was in our other container. That's what I was talking about before, these instances of our image. So this is a container that does not have figlet since we have not installed it. See what's going on here? We have multiple instances of containers of the image Ubuntu. So if you're still fuzzy on images and containers, would definitely check out that article that I wrote. Um, you can think of images as a VHS tape. You can think of containers as a VHS player, kind of. It's a stretch, but the article is very helpful. All right, so if you are working in your terminal and you open another tab and you simply just run a Docker PS, so now I'm given a list of all of my running containers. So I can see my container ID, our image, when it was created, the ports, names, basically all the info I would ever need. Um, so if you're working with Play With Docker, you can start another instance or you can just do that in this new tab. I'm going to run docker run dash it dash dash rm and then Daniel Craig slash ASCII Aquarium. Okay, if you didn't get that, I put it in the bottom of the video here. Um, and I will explain what that is in just a moment. So I'm just gonna copy that, put it in there. Whoa, it's an aquarium, but where did it come from? So that's a great question. This came from the Docker Hub registry. So this is a public Docker repository. What does that mean? This is an image that uh, a user created Daniel Crake in this case, and you can find it here at this handy dandy link. Um, so did you notice that when we typed that in the output of our terminal, when we did that first command, it told us it was unable to find Daniel Crake ASCII Aquarium latest locally. And then it said latest pulling from Daniel Craig ASCII Aquarium. So what's happening here? So Docker checked if we had the image locally and it was not there. So then it pulls the image and all of its layers from Docker Hub. And this is where Docker gets its lightweight street cred. It'll never pull the same image if you have it locally, only the layers that it may not have had previously. So this is a copy on write system that allows for much quicker builds. It's awesome. So aquariums are cool, but you're probably gonna be using Docker more for just ASCII fonts and sharks. <laughs> so the good news is that Docker Hub has images of just about everything you could possibly need, be it official images of languages, there's Python language on there, databases, even the entire Star Wars movie in ASCII art, Docker Hub has that. So here's a couple of things to know about the Docker registry. Many repos on Docker Hub are created people like you and me. Um, we'll create one of these in one of my next videos. And the format of these will be something along the lines of Chloe codes things slash really cool thing. Um, there, are all, there are also a lot of official images like a Python one. Um, they usually have really great documentation. They have tags for all their versions that are listed and they also come with directions on how to use them. So those are very helpful. You'll be able to tell um, on Docker have which ones are official and which ones are not. It's pretty easy to determine that. So while my aquarium's still running, 
let's run a Docker PS in a new tab. So I'm gonna open a new tab here and write Docker PS. Cool. So you'll see my aquariums running as well as Ubuntu, perhaps Star Wars, because I'm sure you were intrigued after I mentioned that. And if I click exit out of any one of them, so I'm gonna go back to my aquarium here and type exit or control C. Um, and then I run Docker PS in my other tab again, just Ubuntu. So uh, I will no longer see that container listed because it is no longer running. Okay, eating my organic pork rinds. <laughs> I love to snack when I make demos, what can I say? So let's talk about Docker layers. So as I mentioned before, you notice when we pulled an image from Docker this last time that you'll see a bunch of letters, numbers, will either say the words pull complete or already exist beside them. So if you want to see for yourself, run, um, you can do docker pull docker slash whale say. So I'll type that in here. And see all these things that popped up here that said already exists, already exists. Well, in my case, because I've downloaded it before. For you, since it's your first time, it probably um, is pulling all of them and says pull complete. So you'll see that the first time we run it, it runs pull complete. Um, and the second time we run it, so try it again, um, you can press the up arrow and enter, you'll see what I just saw, which is already exists. So it goes much faster. So believe it or not, this is not witchcraft. This is part of the awesomeness that is layers in Docker. There's some really great articles out there that compare Docker layers to tracing paper, pancake stacks. Um, I personally prefer the pizza metaphor. You can read about it more in my blog, which I've listed below, but TLDR. Let's say that we had a cheese pizza. We have a base layer of dough. Um, we have tomato sauce, we have cheese. And then we decide that we want half of our pizza to have pepperoni on it. Would I bake another pizza from scratch, make new layers of cheese, tomato sauce, everything, and add pepperoni to that one? Of course not. I just add a layer of pepperoni to half of my existing pizza. No need to go through the trouble of making a new base pizza. As we make more changes, we create more layers to our pizza. Can you guys tell that I like to eat? I really like snacks, so I apologize if I'm making you hungry in this video. So after running a container once on a machine, you'll notice that all the subsequent builds load a lot faster, and that's because Docker layers allow for a copy on write system. So it's only requiring us to add what we need and not rebuild anything that we already had. So to break it down even more, images are read only. Anytime we create a new container from an image and we make changes to it, we can transform it into a new layer. So an image is created by stacking a new layer on top of an old image. Whoa, I know, it's it's a lot, you guys. You may have to rewind that last part and listen to it again, but I promise it makes sense. So, there are two ways that we can stop our containers. If we run the docker stop command, it'll send a term signal, and after about 10 seconds, it'll kill the container um, that hasn't stopped. Using the kill command will immediately stop the container. So feel free to try either now. Um, first, you can run a Docker PS to see what containers you have running, and then simply write Docker stop or Docker kill, and then the container ID that you'd like to use. So it's worth noting that kill can take multiple IDs at a time, and you only need to include the first three letters and numbers. So run a Docker PS after killing and stopping, and you'll see that your containers have been removed. So here's a couple more helpful commands. Uh, if you want to see a list of your stopped containers, you can run a docker ps-a. And if you want to restart a container using the same options that you launched with, you can use a docker start and then your container ID. So you did it! In just like a couple minutes, maybe longer if you got distracted by aquariums and Star Wars ASCIIs, you learned about docker, you ran your first container, you used docker hub, and you learned about Docker layers and you're, you're now able to stop and kill your running containers. So if you wanna dig a little deeper, um, 
I'm going to be making a video after this that uh, goes a little more deeper into tags and, and volumes. Um, you can also check out my blog on Medium where I post a lot more specifically about a lot of the topics we covered in here. I've also listed them below. Thanks for joining guys and uh, I hope you enjoy playing with ASCII fish and using Figlet and um, show all your friends all your newfound docker skills. Bye!